Hey guys, I'm actually adding this in while I'm editing the video for the second time, and when I uploaded this the first time, it was instantaneously blocked worldwide. So if the editing is a little weird, or there's a little less editing than normal, that's why. So what we're going to be doing today is fixing the end of Naruto. However, we are not rewriting it. The purpose of this video is not for me to say, I don't like this, so let's get rid of it. No, the purpose of this video is to say, what could we do to enhance or improve what's already there. What this means is that at the end of this video, Naruto still marries Hinata. Naruto and Sasuke still have the exact same fight. Sasuke still tried to kill the Kage. Kaguya still showed up, and Boruto still happens and plays out exactly the same. The events of the manga, from the war onward, can't actually change in terms of what actually takes place. All we can do is add or tweak very minor things to make some of the endgame stuff play off a little bit better. Most of it will involve adding small scenes of interaction between characters or tweaking dialogue here and there. I think the first thing I want to address here is Satsu Saku. I think if we are going to have Sakura and Sasuke end up together and attempt to tell the readers that Sasuke has always had some kind of feelings for Sakura, we need to put something in this theory to back it up. So what we are going to do is have Sasuke show remorse. We're going to have a very small scene after his class with Naruto in the Land of Iron when he teleports away with Obito. We'll have a small scene where Sasuke shows some remorse for trying to kill Sakura. Now, he's not going to regret his action, but perhaps he makes a comment as if saying he wishes that Sakura had actually been telling the truth. That if Sakura had been telling the truth, he would have welcomed her onto his team with open arms, and he would really wish she would understand his perspective and join him. Just something to make it not seem like Sasuke goes from attempting to kill her to apparently being in love with her. Similarly with Naruto and Hinata, I think it would be very good to have a chapter where Naruto and Hinata sit down and discuss the confession on some level. Now I'm not saying it should go anywhere or they should get together or anything romantic should happen, no. In fact, what you could even have happen is that you could even have that be what Naruto is doing when the ninja from the cloud arrived to ask about Sasuke. You could even have, especially if you wanted to still do the whole pairing wars thing, you could even have Sakura interrupt Naruto's conversation with Hinata when it starts getting too detailed to bring up the fact that there are the cloud ninja here asking about Sasuke and Naruto and Sakura can go have the scene with Sai when they find out Sasuke is a member of the Akatsuki, and Naruto lets them beat him up, and Sakura ends up seeing the events that will eventually lead to her decision in the land of iron slash five Kage summit arc. But even a brief conversation where Naruto acknowledges Hinata's feelings are there, I think would very much benefit later on in the series. I also think it would be nice if during the conversation, Hinata could talk more about her relationship with Neji, and what she's doing to improve the situation with the Hyuga clan. I think little scenes and little bits of extra focus on Hinata would do the character of Hinata wondered. Especially little scenes maybe focusing on her relationship with Kiba and Shino. If she's going to be the woman Naruto married, you need to give Hinata something to do. You need to let her expand the character so later on she doesn't feel so flat when she ends up with Naruto in the lab. So in the lab, you can look back on multiple interactions she's had with characters that aren't Naruto about things that are not Naruto. Not to focus too much on the pairings because I could do an entire video on the problem with the pairings in Naruto, but if you could have Choji show up in a few scenes with the woman and get him married, that would be great. Because I don't think they canonically ever appear on screen together outside of like once. And I don't think they interact directly. So if you could really just show the character you're going to pair off together, interact a couple of times on screen. Not even romantically, just have them be on a panel together. Have them meet each other at the very least. Because I don't think Choji even meets the woman he marries at all on screen in the manga. I think the entire thing happens off screen. 
So if you're going to do those pairing, at least have the characters meet during the canon of the story. They don't even need to get screen time together or interact too much directly. Just have them meet each other, for God's sakes. But moving on to the stuff people actually care about, I think the first thing you would really need to do is just drop hints towards Kaguya once in a while. Something as minor as character questioning the origins of Chakra on occasion, maybe have some rabbit imagery appear in the background on like ruins or in ancient areas in the village at times. Just minor things like that I think would do Naruto a lot of good. I don't think you need to be super direct with the foreshadowing, but just leave room open so that when you mention the rabbit goddess, people can go back and be like, oh yeah, that's what all the rabbit imagery is. I think another big thing, if we're thinking of female characters in Naruto, is Sakura. I think it's throughout part two, you could make references to 100 healing, that would be great. I think the pain arc would be a really cool moment to have a scene. Maybe before Hinata jumps in to save Naruto, when he pins the ground when Sakura gets up, and like make reference to maybe having to like release the seal early. It could be one of those cool scenes in anime when Sakura's like, it's, the Jitsu isn't ready, but I guess I could give it a try. And she like does a hand sign, and then you see Hinata jump in, and she like gets distracted. And you could do stuff like that. You could have her maybe reference way back in the beginning of part two when she's fighting Sasori. That if only she could use all her chakra, or if only she wasn't having to divert her chakra to that technique you be able to beat Sakura easily. Just make reference to the fact that Sakura is apparently handicapping herself for the entire series to build up Chakra for Strength of 100. Just make reference to it so that in the war, when Sakura turns around to Naruto and says, I can fight with you and Sake, I've got a technique, don't worry. Every viewer is like, is this the technique she's been talking about? Instead of the people watching being like, what is she talking about and feeling like it came out of nowhere. Speaking of foreshadowing techniques, I think it would be really cool if either during the Sasuke fight near the end of the show or the Kaguya fight, maybe Kurama made the light reference to a Jitsu, like I was saying with Sakura, like, there may be a way, but no, that would never work or forget about it. Which would of course be referring to Kurama theorizing how Baryon mode could work which he would eventually introduce in Boruto. But once again, just have Kurama and characters like Kurama and Sakura have lines, like, maybe that Jitsu could save us. Just to build up them eventually revealing these techniques later, instead of the question, of course, being, why didn't Kurama bring up Baryon mode against Kaguya or Sasuke? Why didn't Sakura bring up 100 healing when Naruto was about to die fighting pain. Couldn't he have just activated it then, even though it would have been weaker? Now, this is moving away from more common criticism into a personal criticism, but I think we could have done with more foreshadowing for what Sasuke's end goal was. Once again, if you want to foreshadow Sakura and Sasuke ending up together, maybe you could even have Sakura ask Sasuke, because it's implied in the theory that Sakura doesn't really buy any of what Sasuke is selling during the war, or at least he didn't fully buy it in the beginning. And you could even have a thing when Sakura asked him, like, what are you working at, Sasuke? And Sasuke could have something like, he could have a line of dialogue along the lines of, like, I'm working to change the world. We as readers obviously all knew Sasuke had his own hidden agenda when he showed up during the war. The problem was that there was no real foreshadowing for what that agenda was. It was just he showed up, had his own agenda, and then the mystery was, what is his agenda? There was no foreshadowing, and then he told us what his agenda was. But moving on to the Naruto, Sasuke, Indra, Asura thing, I think people find it very confusing, and I don't think people fully understand how it really works. And I think it would have been very helpful to explain that Naruto got to where he was through hard work, and the stage did not need to do what he did. He reached out to Naruto and Sasuke because he had faith that they could do it, and it was their own individual action up until that point that convinced him that it was the right decision to give him them those powers. But the thing Naruto and Sasuke had done throughout the series were entirely of their own will. Naruto didn't become that strong because he was destined to. The only thing that was destined to happen was Naruto and Sasuke were destined 
to oppose each other ideologically. It needs to be clarified that Naruto and Sasuke were destined to oppose each other and were destined to take certain stances very vaguely, as in Naruto was supposed to take the stance of hard work. But the things that involve destiny with Naruto and Sasuke are incredibly vague. It's really just Naruto and Sasuke are one destined to fight each other, and that Sasuke being the reincarnation of Indra would be gifted, and that Naruto being the reincarnation of Asura would not be gifted and have to work really hard for his strength, which would inform the philosophy that would clash when they fight. That would be only destiny at play. Destiny had nothing to do with how powerful Naruto became, his ability to change people, his ability to save people, or the fact that he was able to befriend Kurama. Naruto being the reincarnation of Akira had nothing to do with him being able to befriend Kurama. That was who Naruto was as a person. And I feel like that wasn't made very clear. So not changing it, but maybe just change the stage and explanation a little bit to make it more clear. I also think it would be nice to be more clear about how stage and this path mode works. I just think, especially judging by how people have reacted to Boruto and whether or not he still has it, it's very clear that the final power-ups Naruto and Sasuke got were not fully understood by a lot of breeders. Now the problem here is that it isn't just people who weren't paying attention. There's a lot of people who don't fully understand the powers and abilities Naruto and Sasuke got from the day, how long they kept them, how they worked. I mean, there are people to this day who ask what happened to Naruto's truth-seeking orbs, which means that somewhere along the way, the information was lost between Kichimoto and the reader. Now, there's a lot of sources and ways to figure out how that all works, and it is in there. The information is there. It is available to the readers. I just don't know how clear it was, and it does need to be explained better to more casual readers. On that same note of explaining things better, Sasuke's mission, and the mission that kept him away from the village for almost 10 years, is incredibly poorly explained. I think you could have done a much better job emphasizing that Sasuke was the only one who could do the mission, and that it had to be done by him, and the reasons he wouldn't return to the village. Because while, as I said earlier, the information is there, the fact that it is poorly explained and isn't made incredibly clear makes both the characters of Sasuke and Sakura look really bad. It makes Sasuke look like he chose to be a deadbeat father, which he did not, and it makes Sakura look terrible because it makes Sakura look like he's putting up with Sasuke literally just choosing not to be there for 10 years even though it was explained in the manga very poorly that Sasuke's teleportation jitsu is incredibly difficult and there was so much work to be done that he was gone and didn't really have time because they did believe they were on a time crunch. I think the time crunch is really where a lot of viewers get lost there. They just get lost that there was a time crunch that Sasuke wanted to figure out what was going on and investigate the Otosuki threat because the Otosuki could have arrived at any moment. I think a lot of these things, the fact that the Jitsu to travel dimension takes so much chakra, the fact that Sasuke was known by a lot of the underworld, the fact that he was doing intense investigation under a time crunch, I feel like a lot of that is lost in the anime and even in the manga because fans just don't seem to quite grasp that there wasn't much of a choice there, and it had given the character of Sakura and Sake a lot of flack for both bad parenting and just being bad people, which isn't really what Kishimoto was trying to say. Once again, I think a lot of stuff from around this time period in the Naruto franchise suffered for just not being very clear. I think you could also be a lot more clear that Sakura is indeed Sakura's mother. I think that is something that still confuses people to this day, because instead of having Sakura flat out say, yes, I gave birth to you, I am your biological mother, her and Sake gave this incredibly vague answer that they were married because Sarada existed or something. Like, the answer Sakura and Sake give in the Sarada Uchiha arc doesn't really answer the question. It does, and there is evidence throughout the story, but the big moment where Sarada asks the question, 
they say, like, your proof that our love is real, which isn't really an answer to the question of who the mother is. You could even have made a joke. You could have added a scene after they say that, where Sarada's like, okay, that still doesn't answer the question of who my mom is. And they're like, Sarada, stop with your mom. Like, Sasuke could even say it. He could be like, Sarada, like, stop acting. That's a stupid question. I think that would have been really good to have the character just flat out confirm it. You know, I think a lot of stuff around this period was lost in translation due to that series ending, some fans dropping off after it ended, some fans continued to read but only casually and weren't following the series very well, and they tried to jump back on with Boruto and information was lost. I just, there's a very clearly some bits of information around the end of the war to like the beginning of Boruto, it just got lost. And I think the last big thing that could really fit the ending and transition into the Boruto era of the franchise would be just explaining the timeline better. Because it's very unclear when certain events took place. I think introducing a narrator, probably Naruto or Sakura would probably be the best choice. You could have it be Naruto or Sakura telling Boruto and Sarada a story when they're children before Boruto begins. I actually was going to say it could be Sasuke, but then I realized you didn't ever require Sasuke being there during Sarada's childhood, which is of course a no-no. But if one of the original main characters was narrating to Boruto and Sarada, maybe the events that took place after the war, where you could kind of be like, one year after the war, this happened. Two years after the war, the last happened. This month after the last, Naruto and Inata got married. Two years later, Himawari was born. And then like, five years after Himawari's birth, Naruto became Okage. Six years later, Boruto takes place, whatever. Because it gets really confusing when you're trying to put things together. Like, the fact that no one really knows, based off of timeline given in the show, how old Naruto is, it's kind of annoying. So, if it wasn't clear, I think a lot of the things that you could really fix toward the end, besides the minor things I mentioned in the beginning, it just clarifying things better. I think there's some parts of the later series, towards the end and the beginning of Boruto and in that blank period in between, where things are just really confusing for fans. And I'm not saying these things were not explained, I'm just saying that there's clearly something wrong because fans are confused. At the end of the day, the fact of the matter is, if fans, by and large, are confused, something is wrong. That doesn't mean the information or the explanation isn't in the story, that just means that it may not have been conveyed properly. And to wrap it up, one final thing I think you could fix that would help make everything make more sense later is I think you could maybe minorly focus on the fact that if the villages came together, they could progress technologically. You could maybe have a couple lines of dialogue here and there that say things like, well, we don't have the money to focus on advancing medical research or something. Maybe there could be a line like when Sakura mentioned to Naruto, like, yeah, I have this idea for something I want to study. I don't, I can't get the funding because we need to put more money into like ninja tools or into the academy to train new ninjas or into warfare. In fact, as I just said, with Sakura being a medic, it would be very easy to have a thing when Sakura maybe shows interest in like doing some sort of research study as a doctor, and she just can't do it because she can't get the funding because the funding has to go into warfare. And maybe you could have Sakura make a comment and Kaka Kakashi could respond with like, Sakura's absolutely correct. If we had the ability to focus less on warfare and the villages could focus on like research and development, we would be much farther ahead as a society than we are now, which would set up the fact that in Boruto there's video games and computers. And it would really just set up the fact that they have the ability to have that kind of technology they just haven't had the time or the money to develop it because they're constantly focused on war. But guys, those are some ideas of how you could fix Naruto and kind of set up where we are now in the franchise a bit more without actually changing the ending. So I guess you could say that's how you could fix the ending of Naruto without actually changing it or rewriting it. But guys, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave it a like. Tell me how you would fix a lot of the problems that I kind of outlined in this video in the comment section down below. And above all else, subscribe for more videos like this one. 
and some comic book videos as well, as well as some other crazy nerdy stuff. And above all else, guys, have a great day.